is uh, Federico Pianzona, and I'm presenting this work that I've done with uh, Srish De Sharma and Frank Siva, titled Computational Analysis Linking the Emotion Arcs of Books and Reader Response. So what we did is uh, actually look at a kind of data that is uh, taking uh, becoming quite popular for an empirical study of literature, that is a book reviews online. And for those of you who don't know, many people are writing reviews about the books they read and post them online on platforms like uh, Goodreads, which is maybe the most popular for English language speaker, but there are similar platforms that are used also for, for other languages. So what we did is we uh, took data from uh, uh, Goodreads and, and we have the metadata of the books that have been reviewed, the rating, so the number of stars that people are leaving, and also the full text of the reviews of the book that have been written. And what we wanted to look at uh, using this kind of data is uh, if we can somehow quantify and measure the impact that stories uh, can have on readers. Because you know, we know that uh, especially what we are interested in is in the way in which stories affect people emotionally and how they can be influenced by what they read. So emotions in stories can affect readers and their engagement with the story and also we think the evaluation they have of a story. There have been research in, uh, in other fields showing that um, there is somehow what is called a positivity bias. So when something is uh, positive, it's spreading more, more easily or it's uh, generating a more positive uh, response. This is where it has been shown in uh, marketing research in, in particular. And what we think it, that we, we would find is that if a story is uh, has some somehow positive emotions can also elicit a more positive response. It's a very simple hypothesis. I will, I will formulate this in a clearer terms uh, as soon. But the idea is that uh, this positivity bias, this framing effect, like uh, was known also in the eighties and nineties, uh, is a uh, is, is still valid. So if we perceive something framed in a positive way we are more likely to have a more positive attitudes towards it. So we also already had some preliminary evidence of what we wanted to look at, because when we, in the work that I did previously with uh, Gerard Lauer and Simon Rebora, we looked at comments posted on a platform like Wattpad. And here, what you can see is the two uh, lines, one in, uh, in green, one in red, um, that are showing the sentiment that we measured across the length of a book. And the red one is the sentiment of the book. And the green one is the sentiment of the comments left at the paragraph level on a mobile reading platform like Wattpad. And when we found that in many cases, there was a very strong association between the sentiment of the book and the sentiment of the comment. Meaning that where the book was positive, we also noted that there were more positive comments. And when the book was negative, very often there were also more positive, more negative uh, comments. Um, this association in some cases was really, really strong. And the core variance between uh, book sentiment and comment sentiment was uh, quite high, as you can see from this summary table, where we did this for six classics and, uh, and six uh, uh, teen fiction written by, by amateurs. And so we thought, okay, we, we have this preliminary evidence. Maybe this is the case also for a more, uh, a broader audience, not just for uh, um, Wattpad readers. There are uh, very special kind of demographics, so quite young, uh, very often teenagers, and also more used to read uh, the genre of teen fiction. So we, we want to see if published books could um, show a similar, uh, a similar pattern, maybe. So the general idea behind our study is that we, we could we, we thought that we could observe some kind of positivity bias in this data. And the question was, do happier stories more frequently receive positive reviews? And so we formulated a few hypotheses in, in clear terms. Uh, the first one is that the sentiment of a book has a positive linear relationship with the sentiment of its reviews. So more books with more positive sentiment will also have on average, 
uh, reviews with a more positive sentiment. The second hypothesis also uh, derived from our previous uh, uh, study on what was that uh, romance will be the genre with the strongest association between the story sentiment and the review sentiment. Because we found that for teen fiction, which is uh, mostly romance, uh, had a stronger association between book sentiment and comment sentiment than um, other classics that were not only, only romance. And our third hypothesis is that because of this general idea of this framing effect, um, the last part of the book being the one that I've been read more recently before writing a review um, would have a stronger effect uh, on the sentiment of the reviews. So it's a, somehow a, a more um, detailed specification of uh, hypothesis one. A few words about the data that we used. So we um, compiled a data set of books, uh, paying attention to keep it balanced. So we had in total, we had 428 books. Uh, the goal was to have 50 uh, books per each genre, nine genres that, that we selected. You can see them here in, in the slide. But for one, um, one genre, which is bestseller, uh, we used a list that was uh, published by Matthew Jokas in there and, and, and Jody Archer in the book, um, The Bestseller Code. So they actually have this list of bestseller based on the plot shape that they found. So we wanted to actually see, okay, they consider this to be bestseller because they actually sold a lot of, uh, of copies, but they also have a, a common pattern in terms of uh, the story arc, the emotion arc in the story. So I wanted to have a closer look at this uh, this genre, but the others that have been taken um, using the um, tags that have been uh, assigned by readers, by reviewers on uh, on Goodreads. So we all include the fiction novels in English. Uh, history also uh, is as it's the only genre including in some nonfiction because these are also biographies. And we selected the most reviewed books for each genre to maximize the number of, uh, of reviews that we could have for, uh, for each book. We then went down the list actually to make sure that uh, we have at least 40% of books written by a female author because we wanted to prevent bias uh, related to the gender of the author. And we also tried to eliminate to, uh, books that are... Uh, were part of the, of a series being the second or the third book. So we just kept the most reviewed book within a, within a series to avoid that um, one, one, in, one author or one series could influence the overall trend that we, we observe. We used a, um, an existing data set of Goodreads book reviews, and we got the full text of these books, many of which are under copyright from uh, uh, lending them from, from digital libraries and uh, taking advantage of the um, data mining exception that we have in the European Union, saying that we can uh, do data mining um, on even on copyrighted text, as long as these are lawfully obtained and are only used for research purpose. So in general, we, we have a minimum of 300 uh, English reviews for each book. And um, for the bestseller genre, which was not um, none of the books were part of the uh, the original data set. We scraped them additionally directly from, from Goodreads. How do we did we compute the sentiment and then proceeded to test our hypothesis? Well, we computed the average book sentiment, so assigning sentiment values to each of the sentences and then uh, taking the average uh, across the length of the book. We did the same for the review sentiment. So we assigned a sentiment to each sentence in a review, then calculated the average of, of each review and then the average of all reviews for a book. We tried the several methods for sentiment analysis because we wanted to pick the most accurate one. There is a one uh, data set uh, manually annotated for um, book reviews. And so we use that as a, as a test set to measure the accuracy of both dictionary-based approaches, like the most famous Sujet, 
by Matthew Jokers or the NRC by the uh, Canadian uh, uh, Research uh, Foundation. But we also tried more um, some neural approaches using deep learning based on a transformer model like uh, Roberta, which we then finally uh, we, we fine tuned using the training set of the the data set, the manual annotated data set that, that I mentioned. And we use uh, a three classes, so negative, neutral, and positive sentiment. And to compute the story arcs, we use the, of course, we have the raw values of the, the sentiment for each sentence, but then we use the movie's window score of minus and plus five sentences, meaning that we, because we, we think that the sentences immediately preceding and those that are the reader can expect to come soon can both influence um, the sentiment, the way in which we perceive a sentence, be that positive or neutral or, or negative. So we ended up using the um, fine-tuned uh, Roberta um, transformer model because it is the one with the highest accuracy. So the accuracy for the book reviews is around 94%, and the accuracy for books um, was around 79%. So this is the best result that we could obtain. It's much better than those uh, based on dictionaries. So we decided we go for this. Also, because uh, um, if you if you use a method based on dictionary, um, so a list of words with assigned the values, a sentiment values, uh, it could be that if a review is just mentioning things happening in a in a book which is dark, uses more words that are negative, like I could think of thriller books. It's more likely that the, a review would be using negative words, but not just because not because it's negative, but just because it's mentioning things happening in the book. Whereas with a, a transform-based uh, approach, it's fine-tuned on the manual and the data. The labels have been assigned to humans, as, uh, assigned by humans to the sentence itself, not considering the content of the sentence, but the, the evaluation that a sentence is expressing of a book. So it's more accurate in terms of being actually a positive review of the book, regardless of uh, regardless of the fact that the words used in that sentence that would be negative or, or positive. So, so a quick look at the, what we found um, in terms of differences between genres. So this is the, we ordered the different genres from the one with the highest book sentiment with to, to the one with the lowest book sentiment. So romance has a higher book sentiment and science fiction as the lowest uh, book sentiment on average. And there are, these are just an overview of the pairwise significant differences between uh, between genres. So you see that and uh, there are some significant differences between these groups. So given the same order, I'm going now showing you the average review sentiment by genre. And see here that we have three genres that significantly differ from uh, the others. And our classics and bestseller that on average receive um, reviews with a lower sentiment. And we have a children books that receive on average reviews with a higher uh, sentiment. And here you can see the pairwise uh, comparison. So showing you that, uh, yeah, the other genre differs significantly from these three either because they are lower or, or higher in, in terms of sentiment. Now let's start to have a closer look and go in the direction of testing our hypothesis. Here we are plotting the association between book sentiment and review sentiment, which is what we want to test in our hypothesis number one. And you already see that, interestingly, there are positive linear trends um, for all genres except bestsellers and, and thrillers. You can notice that there are some uh, um, interesting outliers in, in, in thrillers uh, in particular. And bestsellers, they show yeah quite a clear trend, uh, downward trend. So it would be interesting to, to test this in, more, in a more robust way and see uh, actually what we found, what we find here. So coming now to our hypothesis. By the way, I didn't mention that we pre-registered this study. So 
You can actually find in uh, on concordance here a link to the pre-registration if you want to read more details, but we defined in advance the statistics, our hypothesis and the statistical model that we are going to use to test them. So using the pre-registered linear model, um, which includes a bunch of covariates and also an interaction between book sentiment and genre, um, we actually found that um, we can accept our hypothesis. So book sentiment can predict review sentiment. Including all these covariates and, and interaction, um, we actually, we see that the covariance explained, it's around the 58%, which is quite high. And in particular, it's book sentiment, genre and average rating that are contributing to explain uh, the variance in, uh, in review sentiment across books and, and genres. Um, the interaction that we um, forecasted to be significant is actually, uh, it's not. So book sentiment and genre do not interact significantly, but you also see that ma of, like the, many of the coverages that we plan to have in our model are not significant, like ratings count, text reviews count, and the number of sentences, the length of the book, do not contribute significantly to, to the model. Um, so we also had the second, so yeah, we can accept uh, our first uh, hypothesis, which is already um, interesting for us. On a second thought, we also realized that actually including average rating may not be a good idea in this case, because, uh, um, you know, average rating is the number of stars people are giving. And then we are measuring the, also the review sentiment, which is the positive or negative words used in sentiment. And we thought that, okay, maybe there's a average sentiment. It, it's really likely to predict the review sentiment because somehow they're expressing something similar. And so if we include uh, the average rating in our model, it can hide the contribution of, of other variables. And as you can see, if we just have a simple model, simply having average rating, trying to predict review sentiment, it can explain 26% uh, of the, the variance. So, so we decided, well, let's try to um, to have a model which um, looks more closely at the contribution of um, book sentiment. So we excluded the no significant variables and also uh, average rating. And we see that just keeping book sentiment and the genre without the interaction um, shows that yeah, the contribution uh, of book sentiment in predicting reduced sentiment is still significant. And we have three genres that are significantly different from romance, which is uh, our baseline. And these are classics, bestseller, and children. Let's come now to our second hypothesis, which is the one about romance. So does romance have uh, a significant stronger association uh, between story sentiment and review sentiment? Well, no. We saw that the interaction between book sentiment and genre is not significant, so we have to reject our second uh, hypothesis. Let's now go to the third hypothesis, the one about the ending part of the book being strong, more strongly associated with the re review sentiment. And we, if we compare two models, so one using the whole book sentiment and the one and one using only the last part of of the book, uh, we see that the models are actually almost identical, which is somehow maybe in favor of our idea that uh, the last segment of a book somehow is explaining a lot of uh, the, vari the variance in the review sentiment because uh, we have uh, less data points in the last segment than what we have in the, the whole book. And, but still the amount of information that we, we have in the model seems to be quite enough to explain uh, the variance of review sentiment. But in, in the models that look almost identical. So, um, this statistical way of testing this hypothesis uh, doesn't tell us much. We need a more fine-grained way of uh, understanding what's going on between the sentiment of the book and genre. And so this is actually the end of our pre-registration, but what we thought that, okay, is, okay, let's try to do something more. And what we did is to turn to generalized additive model because uh, they can give us this the fine-grained view that we need. So GAMs are uh, regression methods characterized by the ability to model non-linear relationship between 
the dependent variable and uh, covariates the predictors by using uh, penalized uh, regression of splines. So instead of using the average book sentiment that we, as we did uh, so far as a predictor, we cannot use the sentiment value of each sentence and then fit the regression splines for each observation. So from 428 uh, observations that we had in terms of average uh, book sentiment, we now can use the sentiment of each sentence, meaning that the data points that we have are almost four millions now in our model. Um, and also, so SysGAM uh, are robust in capturing interactions, which may be blurred out when using average data points. We can also test if there is a potential interaction between book sentiment and, and genre across the time course of the book. And also at what point in the book these potential interactions are significant because it doesn't have to be significant at, at all points of the book. So by using uh, the MGCV library in, in R, um, we tested a first model. So this is actually the same model as the, the previous one, just to give you uh, an idea of what we can get. And the, well, the results are, uh, are the same. You see that now we have detailed values and coefficients for the negative, neutral, and positive sentiment of each sentence. And you see that it's a significant for all of them. And also we see that the contribution of, of Jean, once we have more data points, is uh, significant for all. Genre. So we have a lot more information, and this model is showing that there is something uh, going on in terms of sentiment, all three values of the sentiment also for all the genres. So we have to explore more to understand um, what these uh, differences are between genres and between the valence of the sentiment. Um, so we had, uh, we we refined our model and we actually include a, um, a smooth term. And so we, we did what we did is look at the, how the model, how to model sentiment and how it unfolds throughout the book by taking into account the patterns that may be specific for, uh, for each genre. And so what we did is that we created an interaction variable between the genre and the sentiment and then fit that with uh, the smooth of the scale with length. So you see that the by um, parameter here specifying the inter interaction between genre and sentiment, and we are looking at this uh, throughout, at this interaction throughout the length of each book. And what we found out is that this three-way interaction of genre, sentiment, and the progression of the narrative is um, significant. In uh, for all genres, and now I will show you the details in um, where and and when this is significant because it's not saving it at all points of the book books. So this is for romance. The blue line is the positive sentences. The red line is negative sentences, and the gray line is the uh, neutral sentences. How they unfold throughout the book, and what we are showing here is that the contribution of, at each point throughout the book, of positive sentences, negative and neutral sentences in predicting reduced sentiment. So it's the association between uh, positive, negative, and neutral sentences with the average score of the reduced sentiment. And you see here that uh, in the beginning, so the Positive sentences in the beginning are more likely associated with higher review sentiment. Because you see that the, the curve starts at a higher level and then um, goes down around the 20% of the book. And at the end, you see that having positive sentences after the 80% of the book, so really in the last 20% of the book, is more likely to be associated with having more positive reviews. On the contrary, having negative sentences at the end of a romance book is more likely to be associated with more negative values in the sentiment of the reviews. For neutral sentences, there is no really uh, a big change. 
I can show you also this in uh, looking at the difference between positive and negative book sentences. And we, I will show you then this graph because I, also for other genres, and you see that when the the X axis marked in red means it means that there is a significant difference between how positive and negative sentences are associated with uh, review sentiment. And if the line of the difference is above zero, it means that positive sentences contribute to have more, to have higher sentiment of the reviews. If it's below zero, it means that negative sentences in this part of the book contribute to have more, to have higher sentiment in the reviews um, overall. And so you see, this is just another way of showing you what I showed you before. Um, it's actually having positive sentence throughout a romance book is more likely to give you um, more positive reviews, but at some point you need uh, a crisis, so ne negative reviews just before the end, but you need a happy ending. So this is some, in very simple terms, it could be conceived as the recipe to have a, a romance receiving more positive uh, reviews. So you see that at first sight, the, interact, the interaction and the association between book sentiment and review sentiment is not linear, but follows a non-linear trend. And I can show you the same thing also for, for other genres. For bestseller, it's actually quite linear, but um, negative uh, reviews are, I'm sorry, negative sentences in the book are quite, can be associated with a um, lower, um, review sentiment, but the, the last part for the bestseller is not really that important. For children books, the last part is actually uh, quite important. So having having positive uh, sentences at the end is, is quite important. For classics, having positive sentences and especially having a positive ending is really, really important, seems to have more positive uh, reviews. For fantasy, beginning and ending doesn't matter that much, apparently, but it seems so important to have a, a positive uh, section in the central part of the book. For history books, a negative uh, central part is, uh, is important, and especially uh, uh, an happy ending, a positive ending this is also contributing a lot to explain this variation of the review sentiment. And for science fiction, well, very often when you have positive sentences in the beginning, you will see more positive uh, sentiment in the reviews and also when you have uh, a happy ending. For thriller, it's really ups and downs, but you um, need um, negative sentences, especially at the, at the end. Because you see here we are always below the uh, the threshold of, of the, the, the zero. So, the, so it's a, the contribution of negative sentences is significant. For young adult books, we see that as they are likely to receive more positive reviews if they stay positive throughout the book, and especially if the ending part of the book is, uh, is positive. So the conclusion is that we found a significant association between book sentiment and review sentiment meaning that the emotions portrayed in a book have an impact on how people evaluate the book, but this association follows different non-linear patterns for different genres. 